Wamboi Kabero, Starlet Waho, Rita Waeni, Veronica Kerubo, Josephine Owino, Imelda Judith Karenga, and Rosalind Akos Ogongo. What do all these females, among many, many others that I've not mentioned, have in common? These are all women who died in the hands of their partners or their spouses. Africa Uncensored mentions that we have 500 women who have died from the partners in Kenya between 2017 and 2024. WHO has another heartbreaking statistics. It states that Kenya experiences one of the highest rates of femicide in Africa with an estimated, wait for it, 47 women killed every week. This issue is beyond statistics. And it's about time we speak about femicide and what is happening in Kenya. Welcome to the podcast. My name is JF, as always. I'm excited to have you here. So go on ahead, grab your cup of chai, a drink of choice, and join me. Let's unravel femicide and find out what exactly is happening to Kenya and why are our partners killing us. I want to start off by saying that femicide is not only the actual killing of women by their partners or their spouses. Femicide can have different faces. It can be described to be any form of violence against females. Femicide can have a face of domestic violence in the home. It can have a face of grapes. It can have a face of honor killings or even dowry related deaths. And it is so sad that this is one of the things that Kenya is leading for in Africa. When you look at the beliefs that are in our society today, you find that the beliefs, the Kenyan society is actually a patriarchal society. It's a society that promotes gender inequality and promotes toxic masculinity. I recently had a conversation with some ladies and I was so surprised that in this time and age that if a man buys you a drink or two or a bottle, it's like they're expecting something in return. And if you don't do what they expect in return, this is what leads to those cases we have of people being thrown out of the car or people being thrown over balconies. I think this is very, very unfortunate because at the end of the day, if you have not communicated clearly what you expect as you're buying the drinks or as you're buying the food, it is so wrong for you to take someone's life in response to food or to drinks. I remember a few years ago, I had um, a bit in a very sad way the mother of one of the victims that I've mentioned here say that if she knew that her daughter was going to be killed because of a mere 13,000 shillings, she, should, she wished that the person, the perpetrator, would have just called her and told her that, she, that he wanted his 13,000 bob. If this is what would have saved her daughter's life, she was willing to do over and beyond. And it is unfortunate that the men that we have entrusted with our lives, in most cases with our bodies also, turn against us 
and respond to us with a lot of violence, which in turn ends up with dismembered bodies as has been the case in Kwari. Just a few days ago also, it was so sad to hear that from a dream. I'm sure even though the, the family of Josephine, even though they were looking, uh, even though they were just uh, hoping that they would find her, they did not hope that they would find her in that state. To hear that the bodies, especially on the first day, around nine of the dismembered bodies were females, it breaks my heart as a woman. And if I'm going to speak honestly, I have to say that I don't feel safe as a woman in Kenya today. And it begs the question, men, Kenyan men, why are you killing us? Why are you treating us with a lot of violence? Why are you raping us? This is a question that I'm putting directly on the Kenyan men table. And I would love to hear from Kenyan men in the comment section about what is this phenomena that is going around that I know or not today from a female is met with extreme violence. Wait, before you continue watching, kindly ensure you like, you share and subscribe. It helps to support our channel and it helps to grow. Our stats show that around 70% of you guys have not subscribed. So do us a favor and click the subscribe button. Now, continue watching. It's important to note that irrespective of the statistics that I've mentioned there, majority of the cases actually go unreported or unnoticed. A society, is our beliefs are deeply rooted in toxic masculinity where we devalue women and women are expected in Kenya to be submissive and nurturing and loving, irrespective of how they're treated. This is very, very unfortunate. I recently had a conversation and the person was telling me that if you notice the, the countries abroad, they prosper so much. And she was saying, could it be, could the reason be because these countries actually take care of their women and their children? I think this is something to ponder on because in Africa and Kenya, so to speak, our countries are not prospering at all. But if you look at how we treat our women, then I mean, it's, it's almost easy to say that it's in relation, our prosperity is in relation to how we treat our women. Financial empowerment plays a huge role in all of this. It is very, very difficult if you come from poverty or if you are not financially empowered for you to be able to live a, a, an abusive relationship. And therefore, I want to encourage all women, irrespective of what you have, your level of education, it is important that we have or we find something to do such that when need comes or when the, uh, the relationship turns toxic, we are able to come out and we are able to stand up for ourselves. Nobody is going to come and save you. You have to be willing to save yourself first. Lastly, I think it's important to mention also that there is a way our law enforcement and the police and sometimes the judicial officials handle these kind of cases. It's not easy. I don't know if you've ever been to a police station. I have. And it's not easy to go and to recount your ordeal in front of everybody. Um, sometimes it involves a lot of sensitive information. And the way the police, um, uh, the police stations are built or the way they are is that sometimes, I don't know, but my, my scenario was that he had to listen to you first, the police officer had to listen to you first. And then after listening to you, that's when he now asks you again to say what happened as he writes it in the book. And sometimes when you've just undergone a very traumatizing event, such as uh, being essayed, it's not easy for you to even speak to a man. And I feel like there's more 
that our police officers can do in terms of training, in terms of uh, being taught how to handle these cases. You know, even when you're talking, there's just a way that sometimes you can be, you know, they can seclude you. They can, you know, once they hear that this is what you're coming to report, there's a way they can just take you out and put you on the side um, in a private room where you can now share your experience. And therefore, these are some of the things, some of the questions also that they ask. You know, sometimes they can even ask you, hey, when will you say, you know, and for you to repeat that is very traumatizing. This is some of the reasons that make people don't, uh, people not even to report these cases. And therefore, um, I want to add my voice to end femicide in Kenya. It is, um, it is embarrassing, actually, that in 2024, Kenya, a country that is known to be very uh, progressive, to be grappling with this kind of issue. There are definitely ways that we can make this better as a country. And first off, I think we should have better police and law enforcement training so that they're able to know how to handle these cases. Honestly, some of the questions that you ask are very irrelevant. They just bring pain to the person who has undergone that experience. Being made to relive and to recount that experience over and over and over again makes it very difficult for victims to come and report. Number two, I think we should have stricter laws for offenders who have been found guilty. Our parliamentarians can help us in having laws that hold these people accountable. Let us have laws that deter the actual acts of femicide. Once you know that, the, once you know that um, let the law act as a deterrent. Because once you know that the sentence for this is like, say, maybe life or too high, then I don't think people would willingly or continuously engage in this kind of a thing. The other thing that we can do is let's have education and awareness for our girls as young as possible. Let, let, and not just girls, also boys. Let's teach the boys how to treat women. Let's teach the girls what to expect, when to walk away, and when to be able to, the, to the red flags to spot so that the relationship is turning toxic. The best way that we can cause or we can bring this awareness is by how we live our lives at home. We have children, we are raising children. We interact with our neighbor's children on almost on a daily basis. Let our neighbor's children and our children see us treating each other with decorum, decency, and respect. And I dare say that our society can change for the better. I cannot go without mentioning financial empowerment. Women, hey, we have to stop relying and sitting there and relying on men or our partners for everything. Let us make our own money. Let us join chamas where we can be able to come in and do things for ourselves, have uh, income generating uh, projects. Let's look for opportunities, be it in employment, be it in um, self-employment. Just do something so that you are not fully reliant on another person. If you're financially empowered, you're easily and quickly able to walk away from an abusive relationship. And lastly, there's a saying that a woman's worst enemy is a woman. We have to do better. Let's offer support to our sisters. Let ourselves be safe spaces where when you hear that a sister has gone through something, don't be the one to spread the news. Instead, go and hug them, go and speak to them, point them in the direction of organizations that can help them. I've been your host, JF, and this has been one heavy episode because it directly involves the place where I'm raising my children and the place where I live. I want to read in the comments what you think about this situation and what we can do better. And in case I forgot every, anything, please, I'll be happy to hear. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.